Hola and welcome to a new episode of the of the Roofless Dog and Pony Show. My name is Julio Panicello. I am the dream alchemist at Roofless Painters, a free range art school, atelier and gallery for creative nomads. <laughs> Um, with every episode, we reveal the theme of the next painting collection, so you can find out what we will be painting <clears throat> next, and also the reason why. Uh, we explain where the painting theme comes from and how it relates to our contemporary time. We explore different possibilities for visual representation of the concept, using images of paintings throughout art history as inspiration while citing stylistic and historical references. In many ways, our episodes are like our paintings, uh, messy, unpredictable, and unvarnished. Um, so please bear with us if there's any interruption or something goes down. Uh, we usually are able to reconnect pretty fast. Um, all episodes can be found as video on Instagram and also on our YouTube channel. Um, you can find a lot of episodes as well as podcasts on any podcast platform, Spotify, uh, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast. Um, uh, anyhow, you just type the Ruthless Dog and Pony Show and then you'll be able to find a, a, a bunch of episodes. Uh, you're welcome to contact us with any questions or comments about this episode um, and to contribute your notes to this uh, presentation. Uh, we humbly stand to be corrected. So please, uh, if there's anything that we missed or anything that we misquoted or that we didn't match correctly um, with a painting or an event, uh, please let us know with a comment. Um, this is episode 70, uh, 77, I believe. No, 74. This is episode... Uh, hold on one second. So it's just going to 73. This is episode 73. Um, we're going to keep this episode within 30 minutes or less, hopefully. And um, so um, if you have any questions, there is a question button on the Instagram live that you can use uh, if you would like to ask a question. We just found out that there are different options to interact. Um, but yeah, so, um, and we do this bi-weekly, so we give ourselves two weeks in order to uh, create uh, a painting that we can stand behind. Uh, we know it takes more than one session sometimes, um, so uh, that's the reason why we are doing this uh, bi-weekly. Yay, everyone's coming now, so I'm glad that I went through the uh, <laughs> introduction. So... Um, very dramatic. Uh, usually I was just mentioning that we try to get inspired or try to, I wouldn't say react, but um, find a source of inspiration in contemporary events that um, are happening um, around us. Um, one of the reasons for painting is to uh, document or encapsulate uh, the reality and the significance of a moment in time, the moment that uh, we actually paint. So having said that, and because we sort of like are going through uh, a really dramatic uh, geopolitical crisis right now in Ukraine and its invasion. So we've been glued to the news and watching um, footage and images, and it's just quite unbelievable. So we wanted to do something that would feel um, somewhat related, but uh, not opportunistic at the same time or tone deaf. Um, and earlier in the conflict, we um, saw some people already fleeing the country. And um, last night or this morning, we also read the news that uh, um, over one million uh, people uh, from Ukraine uh, already fleed the country, those who could or wanted to. So there is yet again another refugee crisis and we seem to be like going through this crisis uh, globally over and over again. And 
it seems like um, as, as long or the general opinion as long as it doesn't affect us you know it's just one more but uh, we um, posted an image uh, this past week um, precisely uh, related to that even though we didn't mention anything on our Instagram or social media channels of this painting by uh, Otto Dix uh, he was a, a German a uh, painter, uh, expressionist, yeah, German expressionist, I would say, uh, painter, and he um, has a painting of his parents. He usually um, dedicated or painted uh, scenes, historical scenes, in a, in a very grotesque or caricaturesque approach, uh, criticizing uh, the political crisis that he uh, lived through. But this is a very poignant um timeless painting. Uh, he documents um, his family, his parents in particular, and you can you can feel the sadness um, and the silence uh, of the scene. There's something really powerful. The, uh, we talk about how expressive hands are in a portrait. These are very expressive hands. They're not engaged or active in any um, action uh the parents are not talking to each other or to anyone uh there is a sense of not communicating there's a very heavy sense of silence in the scene so um what we decided to do to sort of like convey this idea of resignation and heaviness and uh inescapable uh condition and um almost like survival mode and at the same time um uh uh, try to find value in something that we take for granted is um, make portraits of our parents, make portraits of our parents. So that's the theme. Um, so let me kind of like explain exactly the options and hopefully that's going to give us an opportunity to understand uh, or to make more conceptual connections with this subject. Um, throughout art history, most uh, the majority of artists have use their parents as subjects for their painti paintings. Um, and we're going to go back all the way to 1600s to give you examples. So this could be uh, a portrait of uh, your mom or your dad or both parents or a parental figure because we understand that sometimes, you know, uh, situations and um, um, context may not favor the the selection of this as a subject for your painting. And if there is something that um, you find that you cannot do because you associate the image of your parents with something really traumatic or traumatic, you could maybe a sibling or a grandparent or a family member that makes you feel or makes you, um, yeah, makes you feel like it's the parental, uh, the parental figure. So um, we're going to give you some examples of um, this is from 1600s. Um, it's an unbelievable portrait of Rembrandt's mom. And we think of Rembrandt as this amazing, incredible painter from the 1600s, um, 17th century, who just kind of like uh, instilled life in his portraits. But there's something really um, <laughs> scary or interesting about uh, this portrait. Um, we have encountered this before. We haven't, we've never seen it from live. I've never seen it from live in a museum, but um, we wanted to give you a historical perspective of this subject being part of the artist's um, repertoire of subjects um, uh, in a very uh, common way. So um, a single figure, notice compositionally, close up. Uh, you don't have to show hands. Uh, if you have a photograph um, of your parents and you want to crop it, meaning like, you know, just do uh, the facial features. Um, so giving you some stylistic options um, already uh, and also um, some historical references from a long time ago. Um, let me just go back to um, other interesting uh, images. So we found this uh, portrait right here. Let me see if I can find it. Um, uh, yes, so, okay, so this is a portrait. It's at the Met in New York. Uh, the artist's parents painted in 1932 by 
Rafael Sawyer. Uh, he was actually a Russian born American painter. Um, and he just left Russia and then he did a portrait of his parents and notice that there is a painting inside of a painting. There is a, f a, f a photo, um, a frame photo, a family photo in the background. So it's not only a, a portrait of the artist's parents, but um, again, this portrait carries some um, uh, emotional weight. Um, as in Otto uh, portraits, the parents are not, they're not even looking at the sitter, I mean, at the, at the painter. They're not communicating. The dad is, um, it's not even leaning his head over his hand. It's almost like trying to look away or just putting a barrier almost between uh, the figure and whatever's happening in the scene. There's a sense of, uh, I don't know if I would say shame, but um, there is certainly uh, a very, a very heavy um, emotional um, situation here. And then um, in regards of uh, documenting uh, another generation, because I feel like, you know, this idea of fleeing your motherland and then uh, grabbing anything that is of value when you leave, what would you grab? What is it that you want to take with you when uh, you can barely uh, fit whatever uh, you uh, have owned through the years in a bag, a car, um, you have no time to plan for that, but you have to leave. So I don't know, just like uh, having a painting or a portrait of uh, our uh, parents, I think that it's a way of connecting somehow or trying to connect or empathize with this idea of um, uh, parenthood as a source of uh, beginning and also something that you carry with you because uh, it makes you feel like you belong regardless of where you are. So um, I think hopefully this will have some sort of like um, a conceptual connection with uh, not with um, the political aspect of what's going on, but uh, with the human aspect of, um, you know, <laughs> oh, what's going on, I guess. So uh, I'm just going to give you another example uh, of uh, paintings of um, parents. Ooh, this one got cropped. Anyhow, so we have two David Hockneys. Um, so this one, it's titled My Parents, 1977. I'm sorry it's cropped, but it's a beautiful, vibrant, colorful, uh, very David Hockney-like or Hockney-esque um, depiction of uh, his parents and um, I'm sorry the image you, you cannot see the photo of uh, his mom but again even though this may be like different circumstances there's such an inter interesting choreography in this um, arrangement of figures and still life and architectural elements yet again the images are not talking to each other there's a disconnect there's a silence there's a uh, a statement of um, distance almost uh, one Im one figure the mother is looking at the painter the other one is completely <clears throat> absorbed with something else a different activity and um, so we don't know much about this painting but it just feels like maybe he wanted to pull um, Velasquez kind of like trick because there is a mirror on the console or on that uh, uh, rolling cart and the mirror is reflecting something so we don't know exactly what it is it looks like a painting it doesn't look like a um the uh, the artist but yeah a different uh historical uh perspective context moment but something human and universal about an artist who sometimes expresses themselves but sometimes wants to document uh the life around uh us um, and choosing the parents or parental figures again uh, they don't have to be biological parents they don't have to be parents ultimately if there is a connection a parental connection with something else with someone else I'm sorry a grandfather or someone that may not even be related but it's this idea of um, belonging and 
uh, recognizing uh, the most um, central sort of like tribe or tribal or figure uh, in our lives, um, I would say. So I'm just going to move uh, forward. And uh, there's another very interesting um, uh, painting. This is by a British or a UK, a, a, an artist from the UK, Veronica Burley. 1909-1998. It's titled Self-Portrait with the Artist Parents. And funny enough, um, both her parents were artists. So she decides to insert herself in this uh, parental or uh, painting of uh, her parents, um, which it's pretty bold, but there's some common themes uh, in this image in the sense that the parents again are not communicating they're not talking they're engaging in they're engaged in an action this time around but um, she wants to uh, sort of like uh, taking it up a notch or kicking it up a notch she wants to maybe pay homage to uh, those parental figures in the sense that maybe those were the figures that influenced her to become an artist and at the same time she sort of like wants to insert herself in that um in that image meaning you know this this these are my um inspiration or this is sort of like where i come from and um the the uh the motherland uh here it's uh painting if you will so she belongs uh in the same craft or the same language or the same medium that uh, her parents used so we thought it was an interesting twist or uh, uh, difference um, and stylistically very important because we think portraits of our parents have to be um, uh, perfect and proportionate and so this is not about uh, likeness and we say this over and over again in every single uh, collection uh, Leon gosh I forgot the name of the Leon uh, Kasoff, Leon Kasoff, Jesus, uh, Leon something, uh, he, I think so, yeah, Leon Kasoff, and he was a painter from the UK as well, he's known for abstraction, and um, he's known for putting tons of uh, paint on the canvas, uh, he was born in 1926 and passed away in 2019, Leon Kasoff, and he he started his career essentially painting um, scenes or cityscapes uh, of London. But this is a painting of uh, his parents, a painting he did of his parents. Uh, and I don't have the date, but uh, it follows the same uh, archety archetypes of two figures that are not really engaged. Um, they're just uh, sitting and posing and... Uh, they have completely disconnected um, uh, uh, ideas of what it is to pose for a painter, I guess. Uh, so, and he was, yeah, he was a British, he was born in London, and uh, anyhow. So, a different stylistic approach, uh, just to make sure that we break any um, uh, sort of like idea that this has to look a certain way because it's our parents and we have to make sure that our parents look a certain way. Uh, not really. Uh, surprisingly enough, this is a uh, Paul Cezanne. Paul Cezanne did a few, <clears throat> a few uh, paintings of his dad, uh, and we were uh, super shocked to see that this is one of them. We know of the other one, but this is one of them. This is a painting of Paul Cezanne's dad. Uh, also stylistically, notice that um, there's a certain uh, Cezannean way of painting that doesn't conform to convention at all. Reading the newspaper, we don't have the year, but um, this is one of the uh, portraits that he did. I think this was later, perhaps, because this is uh, earlier. So this is the second so maybe this is the first portrait, one of the first portraits that he did uh, of his dad. We know um, the, when we think Cezanne, we think um, landscapes and still lives and stuff like that and some card players. But he also used this, his parents, as um, his dad in particular, as a subject for uh, some of his paintings. Um, in both, he's reading a newspaper. 
So uh, he's not engaged, and there's also this heavy silence almost. I don't know. There's something about uh, these scenes that um, it's interesting and 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 hopefully um, appropriate uh, for uh, what we're trying to convey and at the same time document. So another very oh um, yeah, this is another David Hogney by the way. So uh, it's probably more well known. Um, this is a portrait of uh, David Hogney's mom, and. Um, I think it's one of my favorite David Hockney's uh, period. So this was done more recently. More recently, I don't know. I should know the date, but um, I don't have the year. But um, it's a portrait of his mom. And even though she is engaged, um, uh, there is this idea of uh, resignation, silence, um, and emotional stillness, um, a combination of strength and vulnerability. And I think it's a pattern, um, an emotional pattern that we see repeating in each of these uh, paintings throughout history, starting from the 1600s with the Rembrandt uh, to this one um, right now. Yes, it is incredible. Um, so it's not the typical, I would, I would say it's not the typical David Hockney, maybe even in the way that he approached this portrait. And how different stylistically it is with some of the uh, pieces that we're most used to uh, by him. Uh, although, you know, uh, with portraits, I think he's becoming more and more uh, um, complex and sophisticated. But uh, yeah, so two David Hockney's. And I want to bring uh, three paintings by Alice Neal. So Alice... Um, and I'm going to uh, show you the, or I'm going to show the three paintings chronologically. I think I only have the dates on one. Uh, this one right here, this was painted in 1946. And this is Alice Neal's uh, mom. And she um, is a recurrent figure in her body of work. There are several portraits of her mom uh, at different times um, of her career or her body of work. So this is 1946. Again, sort of like um, coming out or after showing the uh, painting of David Hockney's mom, there is something also melancholic and uh, vulnerable yet sensitive, uh, personal, intimate about this uh, depiction of uh her mother. Then, then the next one, I don't have the date, but this is another uh, portrait of uh, Alice Neal's mom. This is later in her life. So uh, documenting uh, the passage of time, something interesting about uh, using a subject and painting it in uh, different times. Uh, this is something that we've seen in uh, several painters. We have painted our parents before many years ago. So this is a subject that we have done. So I feel like it's going to be interesting to do it again after, uh, or maybe just uh, depicting our parents in a different, um, from a different photograph, uh, if we use a photograph. Um, and finally, I'm just going to show you, and I have like eight minutes, I have time. I'm going to show you um, the last painting of David, um, Alice Neal's uh, mom, much older, later in her life. And you can see stylistically uh, the difference between the first two and this one being much more expressive, um, much more, um, I would say, powerful and unapologetic. I think that's the word that I wanted to find much more unapologetic. Her expression between the three portraits, I'm going to sort of like, a, now that you have seen the three, I'm going to show you the three once again, and notice the expression of her mom, the eyebrows, um, and the personality, if you will, uh, it, 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 it kind of like um, shines through uh, on the three portraits, even though stylistically, they're so different. The 1946, a few uh, years later, um, eyebrow and uh, same expression, open eyes, opened eyes. And then finally, um, later in her life, same expression. So um, we couldn't find any um, 
paintings of her dad. So maybe, you know, when when you sort of like uh, approach or debate uh, your parents as a subject for your paintings, um, it's such an individual approach because every single relationship is different. So um, everyone chooses to represent something uh, from your previous generation differently. So don't feel like you have to do your mom and your dad or um, your biological uh, mom and dad, or it's the idea is in these times of uh, separation and forced separation, in these times of uprooting, in these times of seeing yet again uh, millions of people sort of like getting um, forced to leave their motherland and um, something also about the use of the word mother, you know, uh, referring to the land, referring to the language, the mother language, the mother land. There's something parental in the things that make you feel like you belong. So the idea is to do a portrait of our parents uh, in the sense that um, uh, we want to document that uh, this is the, uh, the, the origin, the, the parental uh, um, solid uh, bedrock that we all come from and whether it's represented with um, one form of parental um, formula or another but um, and also giving it value what would you take if you would have to flee your house what would you take with you that you think it's um, uh, super valuable um so um, in the last uh, few minutes, we're just going to show you a few more paintings, uh, a very interesting, very interesting image of a portrait of the artist's parents. This is by um, Mark Girdler. Mark Girdler was British, 1891-1939. Very interesting artist. We've never heard his name before. He has an interesting body of work. The artist's parents, uh, this was painted in 1910. And um, I think it's a, an incredible, uh, fascinating, mysterious, um, threatening um, portrait, ominous of something um, dangerous almost, or a sense of loss um, already expressed in the figures. The most interesting and beautiful thing is the use of light in the portrait and also the use of color obviously but how um, uh, uh, the intention of not uh, portraying the facial features necessarily as a way of like documenting uh, descriptively um, parenthood but one of the images is completely um, shaded you can you can recognize you can see the facial features but there is such stark contrast between the strong light on um, the right side of the face. Um, there's something about the bone structure of the male figure that um, it, it feels um, like approaching uh, uh, death almost. There's something uh, very exaggerated about uh, that um, uh, cheekbone um, th that feels, um, yeah, it feels ominous of something. Uh, anyhow, so another um, way of uh, bringing a hand uh, to support the expression of the faces there, even though the image is very ominous, uh, there's silence, there's no communication, there's no engagement, um, there's a piercing look on the uh, uh, painter's eyes or um, by association, I guess, the viewer's eyes. Uh, trying to communicate something to us, trying to say something with the eyes, uh, something deep and profound, something um, that uh, is not superficial or cheerful, something serious. Um, and then there is that hand on the back, you know, sort of like the supporting uh, this whole interaction between these two really somber, ominous figures and ourselves. So um, I thought this was like really powerful. And then um, finally, uh, there is uh, uh, Grand Wood uh, did a portrait of his mom. Um, so yeah, um, very interesting as well, holding a plant. 
And uh, as a final um, example, I think we have this. Uh, no, I think that's it. So, oh, yeah, um, Van Gogh. I mean, we just brought him in because not because necessarily it's our first choice, but just to kind of like show you that uh, this is a portrait of uh, his mom. So uh, <laughs> that's nice. Um, Lois, yeah. So this is a, a portrait he painted of his mom. So again, a subject that um, is universal, uh, crosses um, cultures, and uh, there's something uh, very human that we cannot connect with. And I think, um, let me see, I'm just going back to the autodix, uh, the image that originated this. Um, hopefully, uh, this will be a way to for us to do several things, obviously to document uh, our parental formulas, but at the same time, just bring some uh, gravity and seriousness and empathy uh, in the idea of having to, or being forced to depart, uh, leave behind, uh, divide, uh, say goodbye to um, your identity in a way. Because, you know, sometimes um, if we, Sometimes some people find it hard to find identity in the surroundings and there's a sense of never belonging. But there's always uh, those people that uh, represent that, you know, that that uh, root that it doesn't matter where you are or he, who you're with uh, or what you, or what you're doing. That's sort of like um, that's the it thing. All right. So. Thank you so much. Uh, sign up um, and uh, three hour webinar, two painting, one with feedback. See, it's better um, when you join us so we can in we can interact, uh, but it will be recorded as well. So you can always um, uh, register and then we'll see. It looks like we have poor connection. Thanks everyone for uh, joining. I appreciate Lois, your comments and uh, yeah, looking forward um so much yes yeah, see you tomorrow and please join us and thank you so much bye